Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to turn this Raspberry Pi into an open media vault to store all my YouTube videos that I create. My channel has been growing and I kind of need a place to put all the videos. So I'm going to make a very small uh, DIY NAS that's going to use about 8 to 10 watts and be completely silent. Follow along if you want to see how to do it. Alright, so here's the part that I'm going to be using. So it's going to be the Raspberry Pi 5 8 GB model. The 4 GB would have been plenty fine, but I had this one laying around, so I figured why not. Then it's going to be the power supply and an SD card. It was really cheap, so I opted for the 64 GB one, but you absolutely don't need a, uh, a large one like this. And then I went for an SSD. It's a 2 terabyte um, Samsung Evo. It's one that's old and I had it laying around, so I might as well use it. And I don't think I need more space than that right now. Also, I will not be creating a backup because currently the data is not so important. So if I need a backup in the future, I will definitely add it, but currently I'm not doing it. And then I used this little cheap USB 3.0 to connect the um, SSD. And then I had this uh, Raspberry Pi 5 case with a fan laying around from an older project that I'm definitely going to be using. So that should be plenty fine. All right, Raspberry Pi 5, I think you've all seen that before, nothing new these days. Like this right here, so it, it's very snugly in here. Um, and the cool thing is that it actually um, lets you use all the I.O. like you want. And you could uh, you choose not to put on the cover and just use it like this. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the cover on. So I'll, I'll just connect the fan and put on some, I, I think it needs some um, thermal pads. As you can see right here, there has been a thermal pad sitting right here. And then we should be able to basically just insert the fan. I think I'm just going to go ahead and put the Raspberry Pi together. There we go. All right, so as you saw, I opted for this uh, solid state drive that I had laying around. It's um, in good shape. It's old, but it's in good shape. It has the exact same size as this um, case, basically, so it will fit really nicely together. Um, you could also go with a mechanical hard drive, uh, maybe from a laptop or so. I can show you what I mean. You could also go with something like this from a laptop. This has five terabytes, so that should also be fine. Um, the USB will be able to support enough power, but you would not be able to go with a 3.5 inch hard drive like this one. So this 10 terabyte HDSD hard drive would not be able to be powered just by this USB hub. So if you are going with a bigger hard drive like this, definitely get a power source that is different than the Raspberry Pi. Um, but it should not be a problem to get a um, SATA to USB conversion. That's not a problem. Um, you can check out one of my earlier videos if you want to see how to do that. Um, but in this video, we are going with the SSD because I want some speed and I don't need this laying around. So I can use it for this project. All right, so I think the way that I'm going to be attaching it is actually at the top. Now you might think like, why would you attach it at the top of the case, like where you have the little eight new logo and stuff. But the reason for that is at the bottom, we have some vents that are probably maybe pushing out air, I don't know. But we also have rubber feet and we have this little screw that we can access the SD card later. So I think the best bet is to actually uh, attach the SSD to the top of the case as these are, I don't think these push out air, okay, they actually do, but that's not a problem because that'll just help cooling the SSD because air can easily escape from these vents. And we should be able to basically just plug it in sort of like that. And then I need to find some way to mount it. So like this, and just like that, you would be able to have your own little NAS that is two terabytes or whatever size of SSD you might be getting. All right, so I just went ahead and put some double-sided tape on the uh, SSD here, and we can see that it fits really great. And this is a really small form factor NAS. Uh, this will be very good. So we can go ahead and plug in the um, power and just see what kind of power draw we're getting so far. All right, so as you can see here, the Pi is uh, booted up, or at least it's running, and we got light, so the SSD is running as well. And we are using about 7.5, 7.6 watts. I am expecting this to jump to maybe 10 watts during load and doing actual file transfer. But right now looking at this, this is really good. And that is with the fan spinning. I can hear the fan in here spinning. Um, so this is really great. This will be a very low power server. This little mass is literally pocket size.
Alright, so now it's time to go ahead and flash your SD card. It's really important that you choose the Raspberry Pi a Lite OS. Um, I did not show this in the video, but Open Media Vault will only run with the Lite version, so choose that. Alright, so when you flash your SD card, please go into the settings and choose to enable SSH. Also set a username and a password that you can remember. You can then go ahead and plug in the Raspberry Pi to power and Ethernet, and you should be able to log into a router and see what kind of IP it's running on. Now that you can see the IP is running on, you should be able to remote into it. You might have to type yes here to the uh, SSH um, and then you are good to go. All right, so now you have remoted into your Raspberry Pi using SSH, you hopefully uh, logged in successfully. Now you're gonna go ahead and install Open Media Vault. If you cannot read this uh, uh, command that I'm running here, I will try to leave it in the description, but this is basically what you have to do and it will take maybe about five minutes and it will also reboot when it's done. Now you want to go ahead and log into the browser and enter your Raspberry Pi's IP. What you can also do is you can use the name that you set in the uh, flashing config. Uh, I did uh, NAS as the name, so I can do NAS.local and I can also access the Open Media Vault server. You're going to want to go ahead and log in. The username is admin and the password is Open Media Vault in one word. Uh, when you logged in, you definitely want to go ahead and change this. Uh, the way to do that is by pressing in the little um, person icon in the top right of the screen. So go ahead and log in. All right, so here you are in your login NAS. So what you can go ahead and do is you can press storage and then you can press file systems and then you can press on the plus to create a new one and you can choose ext4. Then you can select your drive if it's plugged in and you can uh, press save and it will then go ahead and create a file system for you. Alright, so now a file system has been created and you can go ahead and mount it. You're gonna go ahead and choose the file system and I put it at 95% warning threshold um, and then I put a tag called 2 terabytes. This is completely up to you what you wanna do. All right, so now you can see that the disk is online and you can uh, press save on the pending configuration changes. And just like so, you can see the use space and you can see that it's online. And now you can go ahead and create a shared folder. You're gonna go to storage and then shared folder and then you're gonna press on the little plus icon. You're gonna go ahead and give your shared folder a name. I'm just gonna call mine two terabyte NAS. Then you're gonna go ahead and select your file system set your path, and then you're gonna give some administrator user rights. And then if you want, you can go ahead and add a tag. And then press save. And now I wanna go ahead and apply these pending changes. After doing that, you can go into your monitoring and you can enable monitoring just so you can keep stats on your server. And what I went ahead and did is I went to the dashboard and then I went to, uh, uh, to change its settings and I added some stuff that I would like to see in my dashboard. You can add whatever you like, but this is just my preference. All right, so as you can see, I have a nice dashboard now that displays basically everything that I want displayed, and that is really nice to keep tabs on your system. All right, so what you can do now is you can go ahead and create a user. Now, this is the user login that you need to use to actually connect to the server from your Windows or Mac. I'm gonna go ahead and put a name for it. Mine is just gonna be called user. And then I'm gonna put a very simple password. Now you can set up the other settings for this user, but I did not. I just kind of went ahead and pressed save on this one. And now you want to go ahead once again and confirm your pending changes. What you can then do is you can head to storage, you can go to shared folders, and then you can press your shared folder and you can press permissions, the little um, folder box, and then you can find the user that you just created. So mine's called user here in the middle. And I went ahead and pressed read and write, and I pressed save just to give it that user write. That means I can connect to the server and I can read and write to it. All right, so to go ahead and connect in Mac, you can go into Finder and you can press go in the top and then you can press connect to server and you can choose to type SMB uh, colon dash dash and then the IP. And then here you wanna type your user and your password and you can go ahead and save the password if you want. And then you can press connection. And just like that, you're connected to your two terabyte NAS. Now, if you want to move files here, it's as simple as basically just drag and drop like I'm showing you in the video right here.
And just to show you how you can connect on Windows, you want to go ahead under the network on your computer and you can find the NAS and then you can go ahead and type, your user, type in your user credentials. So user and then your password. And just like that, you're also connected to your NAS and you can basically start dragging and dropping files in there. I went ahead and dragged a four gigabyte file into my NAS and you can see the speed right here. Now, keep in mind that I am actually on a internet uh, Wi-Fi connection on this desktop PC on the Windows uh, part because I do not have the ability to connect it to Ethernet in my apartment. So speeds may vary and for me this speed is plenty fine. I don't need it to be much faster than that. All right, so just like that you can create a really simple home NAS server. Um, I know that for some people you might want parity or redundancy and you want RAID and all this stuff but for me it's not very important. And the speed is also not that much important because the files that I am working with are not that big. But of course, everyone's uh, need can vary. This is just a simple guide to show you how to do it an easy way. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and have a good one.